Uh, now we've got you back, Nick. Let's move on to our next topic, which is Disney Star Wars Hotel <laughs> nearly <laughs> received a Mandalorian re-theme, but Bob Iger came in and cancelled it all. It was actually Bob Iger that canned this. So they were brainstorming how to you know, make this a success, and he's the one that came in and shit canned it all. Like, absolutely all of it. So, basically, you know, it's closing. The wrap uh, reports that the project likely cost Disney upwards of $1 billion, uh, and there were even tentative plans to open additional star cruises in Anaheim, Paris, and Tokyo. Ridiculous, but okay. Uh, cast members working in the hotel didn't learn of the sudden closure until the news broke in the media. And insiders believe former Disney CEO Bob Chapek, who remains an unpopular figure among Disney fans, no, he doesn't, is largely to blame for its failings. That's what BS. BS. Yeah. He says his decision to streamline many of Galaxy's Edge features as a cost cutting measure resulted in them being incorporated into this hotel, hence why they didn't work particularly well in their new home. Chapek was also keen to bring more wealthy guests to the Disney parks after the pandemic explaining the high admission fee and increases in everything from regular ticket prices to Genie Plus replacing FastPass. Now, they said this, right, a trade anyway, uh, an insider tells um, the rap. One, uh, once you went through the one percenters who could afford it and the fanatical Star Wars fans who would sell their mother to do it, you were done. No one connected to this came off well. So before returning, Disney CEO Bob Iger made the decision to close the hotel's doors a number of ideas were thrown around. Among them were tours of the facilities that would have given access to the bar, dinner show, and gift shop for the additional charge. And they also considered retheming it to the Mandalorian, but Iger said no. Now it's obviously unclear what will happen. Uh, so Disney's apparently lost about $300 million. I would say more. But for starters, why would your go to just be, I just close it? Surely it would be, well, let's. Just retool it, wouldn't you? Just retool it. What the fuck? Thoughts, yeah, Nick, re, re, great re, you, man. honestly. What oh, shit show? Why? Why wouldn't you retheme at Mandalorian, the most popular property? Well, I have a theory behind that. Um, again, it's just a theory. <clears throat> I think uh, Bob Iger. I, I I think um, uh, John Favreau is ultimately going to be out. Uh, I think season four of The Mandalorian is probably going to be the last season mm -hmm. of The Mandalorian. And I think that's why Bob Iger is saying no to the retheme of Mandalorian because they're going to be moving beyond that show, moving forward. Um, and again, that's just all theory and speculation on my part. Uh, I have no evidence to back that up at all. Uh, mm -hmm. But um, they should definitely retool it, uh, but they should retool it to not look like star trek discovery uh yeah. have it actually look like star wars and make it all about the core of star wars which is the original trilogy i mean you you put that is is uh the inside of a death star or you have half of it like the inside of the death star and half of it like inside you know, like a, a Mon Calamari cruiser or mm. uh, a, some rebel ships or something like that, uh, and you retool that thing around the OT, I, I would even consider trying to go to it, but not at the price that they are making people pay. That's the other key to this. It is way overpriced. No way in hell am I spending, uh, you know, four to six grand uh, for me and some friends or whatever to go stay at this thing ain't happening ever. Uh, even if I had the money to just blow on it, I'm not spending that kind of money on, on just a two day thing. It, Disney. It, it's absolutely ridiculous. They got to bring costs <laughs> way down to where, you know, uh, all of us middle-class peons can basically afford to go check this thing out. If, if they would do those two things centered around the OT and, cut costs way way down uh and on top of that change it up because mm. the thing is once you go through this thing it's a one and done thing you've already experienced it if you go again it's gonna be the exact same thing so yeah. change up the storylines change up the the things from day to day you know th th there might be you know like 12 to you know 15 different 
um, story events that are going on. And you can li literally book. So, like, if you've done three of them and you're like, oh, I want to go to it again. I haven't experienced this this story on, uh, in, in the hotel and, and done these activities there. Then you could literally book for a weekend that's doing something that you haven't already done before. Um, mm. it, it, it's literally... I, I mean, they are, they run theme parks. I mean, this should be just simple stuff that they should be able to come up with and be like, okay, yeah. this, is, this is easy money right here. I, I don't know why it's so difficult for them. I do. God, that's because they're greedy. They're yeah, greedy. Yeah. Yeah. And, 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 and Nick, this started off as a greed project from the very beginning. It had zero to do with Chappic. I'm about to drop some bombs here. Um, oh, yeah, for sure. When this was when, when Star Wars, when Galaxy's Edge was announced as an expansion, not just in not just in Florida, but also in California. And they had to move heaven and earth in California to make this happen, including the Pope House, by the way, which was a historically located house on on Disneyland property. But we'll set that all aside. They knew they announced that there was going to have all of this immersiveness. You would be able to interact with robots and characters and all kinds of things. Right. And then. When they got down the road on it, they stopped. They started pulling ideas out of there, including an attraction that was supposed to be opening with both of these uh, park expansions. And I talked a little bit about about that today in my in my um, in my uh, six minute daily, which went for an hour and a half today. So because you know I, I'm real good at time at telling time, but it, they buried all that immersion instead into this hotel. They put it like people have been referring to it. They put it behind a paywall, and they did that out of greed. And when they talk about the fact that they're not, you know, that this was Chappic's fault, no. All of these greed surveys were happening all the way back in 2013 when they were in the midst of, of the NGE project. They were seeing how they could entice people of higher income levels and target those folks via their surveys. They, When you get a customer survey from Disney, one of the demographic questions that's involved is your earnings. They want to know mm. how much money you make. And they want to know how many times a year do you visit Disney properties? And they, they, they even, by the way, they even prior to getting ESPN involved in gambling, they were even looking at that in front of it um, for quite some period of time, four or five years, because they saw what was happening in online gambling. And they wanted to make, to, to make sure that they could get away with running shows on ESPN that would be in support of that. So you're starting, I mean, D Disney is a greedy, nefarious company. And this is this is nothing new. This is nothing new. So when Disney tells you they're going to do something, just put your hand over your wallet. Like See, See, my only thing is if if they were truly greedy, that all the things I explained would be raking yeah. in the dough for them. Oh, well, but let's put it this way: they're greedy, but they're also stupid. Well, but, well, but that's it, exactly what I was like chuckling at because <laughs> we're, we're like we're making we're making some assumptions here. We're making some assumptions <laughs> that they see the world like we do and that they want to want to actually earn money. I have no idea how the hell this thing could get approved at oh, that kind of price tag. Because yeah, if you wanna crazy. if you're gonna charge like six thousand bucks for doing some cosplay and stuff like that, you better get your own ray with it for the price or mm -hmm. or like slave layer. I want, I want a like ray that, theme and spend the night, night honestly. Because that's the only thing that's gonna <laughs> do that kind of expense, give, right? Give, give me a that's, fucking ray theme prostitute for the night. That's that exactly what I mean. I mean for that grand. kind of price, that is what right. we need well, to be well, that... And if you don't get that included, then it's a fucking <laughs> waste of money and no one but seriously, I, I mean it. That is what they needed to do. They need to do like the the, the I don't think so that, that it would be worth it. <laughs> <laughs> look, look, let, let's 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 let me say this. First of all, the price that was supposedly paid for this adventure also included all the R&D that came with it. They offset <sighs> they offset some other stuff <laughs> R&D wise. Right. The second thing, the second thing is the reason that they don't make it more broadly appealing and that they set it at a higher echelon of of cost. And they didn't think that that was going to be a barrier was because they are actively trying to reduce park crowding. I'm not kidding. Uh, they they will tell you, which is completely opposite of what you would think. But what they're doing is they're they're limiting ride availability by not 
scheduling staffing for full capacity attractions. They're they're limiting the number of restaurants and things that are open to again. Their the goal is to reduce crowds but pull more money out of your wallet. I mean that and and look, the whole point of the NGE program in the first place was to figure out how to extract the maximum dollars from your wallet, and that was actually said in an earnings call going way back to, I want to say twenty. 13 or 2014 and it was that statement was made by tom staggs who they promptly got rid of a few years later when again that nge project went from being under a billion dollars to two billion dollars yeah yeah like that's a brilliant plan like okay you already have all the peons are huge fans and you decide we want less peons and more wealthy wealthy good people uh, so that's our plan. We're going to do something that will appeal only to the hyper-rich. The problem is that the hyper-rich, they have more fun ways of spending $6,000 than LARPing for a night. And you see, that's we're getting back to that, that those that can afford to spend 6000 on a night for that kind of hotel, for that 6000 they can get a hell, a hell of a lot more worth out of that money elsewhere. Oh, what, what an absolute shit show. What yeah. an absolute shit show. <laughs> and, uh, and I, I, honestly, I don't blame like Iger for, for not like reskinning. It's like, okay, you're fine. So, so now it's no longer the sequel trilogy experience. Now it's the Mando experience. Is it still 6000 a night? Because that thing, it cost like what, a billion or something like that? They're billion never, dollars, yeah. With, with all the R&D included, yes, that's true. They're never, oh. ever going to recoup. It would be far better just to like you cut a crap on it, take the tax right off right away. It's going to yeah. be a shit earnings call next time anyway. It's just like do what has to be done. And um, Nick, Nick, I love, your, uh, love your avatar there, mate. Yeah, yeah it looks, it looks you, good. You, you inspired it. That's the, that's, the, that's, the, that's the right prostitute oh, no. you get at the, uh, uh, at the Star Cruiser yeah, Hotel. Be, the right. board. I get that? Yeah. Now. Yeah. <laughs> that's an entirely other conversation then. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I have to see if I can get a kitchen yeah. kitchen pass from the boss for that. But yeah. yeah but, but for for six thousand uh, bucks a night, yeah, I mean you better get something like that along because again, <laughs> people that can spend can spend that kind of money, they're not gonna waste it on a night no. of LARPing with other Star Wars geeks. No, just actually, remember no. you're that you're you're doing this experience on your own. You can get far, far better experience yeah. than that doing similar stuff for a fraction of that cost. It's like, it's insane. Like, who the hell thought this through? Well, Disney and their infinite wisdom.